Hello, everyone. I'm Praneet. Um, well, my research uh, has to do with using paired ex vivo drug sensitivity and RNA sequencing data to identify novel therapeutic strategies. Um, and then this uh, project, what we've noticed is that uh, we found a, a novel sequencing strategy uh, in multiple myeloma um, where uh, we sequenced selenexor with uh, daratumumab. So, uh, so multiple myeloma is currently an incurable but treatable bone marrow resident plasma cell malignancy. And a key challenge in multiple myeloma is evolution of therapy resistance. A typical patient's uh, response trajectory looks, looks a lot like this, where the patient's initial response is followed by several uh, short-lived uh, phases of relapse, and it eventually um, uh, develops into a multi-drug resistant state. So our objective is to basically take two components. One is um, capture uh, drug sensitivity, patient-specific uh, sensitivity to uh, vari various drugs that are currently available, um, and then also capture uh, genetic features of individual patients, and then combine those two things to identify which patient uh, would be beneficial with, with which particular uh, therapy. And then in an overarching way, we would basically look at um, which uh, combinations or sequential strategies would be beneficial for, state, for patients in multiple myeloma. So uh, what we developed is, so, so this approach begins with a bone marrow biopsy from a multiple myeloma patient where we uh, extract the cancer cells from the bone marrow specimen. And then we culture them um, in basically like a Petri dish where we kind of make uh, the, the cancer cells think that they're still inside the patient body, provide them enough uh, of the microenvironment for them to survive. And then um, treat these uh, cancer cells with various drugs. As you can see, this is a multi-well plate. So uh, we can treat a lot of drugs in this one. Um, and then image them once every 30 minutes for up to 96 hours, carry out digital image analysis, and then uh, characterize their ex vivo drug sensitivity uh, as shown here. So here basically you see the drugs that we've tested, 500 patients and the number of patients tested with each one of these drugs and combinations. So the single agents are in blue and the combinations are in red. So um, we've been doing this for a few years and we've developed the world's largest myeloma drug sensitivity database. And what we did is that we leveraged this drug sensitivity database and then combined it with the um, RNA sequencing data, which basically has uh, the same uh, uh, myeloma cells that we get from the patient bone marrow sample. Um, we sequence that, we do RNA sequencing, basically get the gene expression data, and then we identify genes that um, co-express. So basically, if uh, one gene has a higher expression, then if the other gene also has a higher expression, which kind of means that they're kind of related to each other some way, um, then those genes would, in this particular plot, um, appear closer to each other. So this is a computational method where you kind of put those genes that co-express with each other closer to each other in the plot. And then we combine this with uh, the ex vivo drug sensitivity data. And then uh, what we do is identify these co-expressing gene clusters, um, which are implicated in resistance shown in red and sensitivity shown in blue. Uh, across all myeloma patients. So this would basically be kind of inferring a mechanism of resistance to each and individual drugs. So here in this particular example, we're showing um, a kind of a fingerprint of bortezomib resistance. So if these genes are overexpressed or the expression is higher, you could generally say that that patient would be resistant to bortezomib. So what we did is we basically uh, did this ex vivo drug sensitivity characterization for selenexor, and for the same patients, we have the RNA sequencing data. So we were able to develop this a fingerprint for, for resistance and sensitivity for selenexor uh, shown here using our preclinical data. And then we uh, verified that this fingerprint 
has actually uh, replicated in two clinical trials, um, Boston and MCC17814, where we looked at patients who've received a selenexar-based regimen, and we looked at the responders versus the non-responders and looked at the differential expression of genes. And um, so basically the genes that are shown here in red are associated with clinical resistance. The genes shown in blue are associated with clinical sensitivity. And then when we put all these three figures together, you can see that there are similar patterns. So basically what we were able to identify preclinically is what we've observed clinically as well. So what this says is that our preclinical approach can recapitulate what you would observe in a potential clinical trial as, as is the case here with Boston and MCC 17814. And then what we did is that we identified, uh, we did this for uh, over 180 drugs. And I'm here showing only data for 79 drugs. Uh, and what we're trying to show here is uh, drugs which have a similar profile uh, in terms of uh, resistance or sensitivity. So basically, you see this huge block of rectangle of, of drugs, and all these drugs basically have a similar transcriptomic profile. What that basically means is that um, the same genes are overexpressed in resistance or sensitivity to all these drugs. So it's, it's the common mechanisms or pathways are, are implicated in resistance or sensitivity to these drugs. But what we are especially interested in is this blue rectangle, which actually has pairs of drugs. So you have these drugs here, and then you have these drugs here. So uh, any pair of drugs that you pick from here and then this set, they basically have an anti-correlative profile, which means resistance um, to one drug means sensitivity to the other. And we basically looked at the um, only the standard of care drugs that are currently available in multiple myeloma. And then we identified that daratumumab and selinexor at different concentrations have a negative uh, correlation. Um, and then we kind of, among all the possible uh, drug pairs, we identified this to be a uh, ideal uh, pair that can be used for sequencing. The reason why we think that is because um, the biology that's associated with resistance to one drug, in this case to daratumumab, is also associated with sensitivity to selenexor. So next, the step was to identify if this is something that we can observe in a preclinical setting. So using our ex vivo drug sensitivity platform, uh, we were able to capture uh, how the uh, patient's cells respond to selenexor. Uh, and that's what we're showing here on the y-axis, but we've divided the patients into two different cohorts. Uh, the patients who've been um, uh, exposed to daratumumab in blue, and the patients who did not, uh, who were not exposed to daratumumab at all. So now, when we compare these two groups, we notice that there is an increased sensitivity in those patients who were exposed to daratumumab. Um, and then now we want to look at whether uh, this phenomenon is observed in a clinical setting. So for that, we uh, relied on uh, clinical trial data from two trials, STOMP and EXPORT028, uh, um, where we divided the selenexor-based uh, arms into two cohorts. Uh, the yellow line is basically the cohort where patients received a, a prior anti-CD38 monoclonal antibody like daratumumab. And then the blue line is where they did not receive an uh, uh, anti-CD38 CD monoclonal antibody. And uh, what we observed is that in both these trials, uh, the patients in the yellow line, uh, they had a longer uh, progression-free survival than the ones in the blue line, which means they're more sensitive to selenexor once they've been exposed to daratumumab. And uh, what we later looked on, looked into is basically like, what is the mechanism behind this? And then what we did is we've identified a few uh, pathways uh, and mechanisms that are implicated in resistance to daratumumab, but also sensitivity to selenexor simultaneously. And we noticed that MIC targets is, is some name that, that kind of popped up. And then we investigated what is happening with this expression of this transcription factor, MIC, and then we notice that in selenexor sensitive patients, there is a higher expression of MEK compared uh, um, 
uh, compared to the ones who are uh, resistant. So the blue line is the responders and the red, red ones are the non-responders. And then we see this in two different clinical trials and also in the ex-vivo drug sensitivity database. So basically we came up with a biomarker discovery tool where we uh, characterize patients ex vivo drug sensitivity and pair that with RNA sequencing data to infer mechanisms of resistance. And we've done this uh, we've shown that this is validated in two clinical trials. And uh, out of all the possible pairs of drugs that we could identify, uh, we've noticed that daratumumab and selenexor are, are an ideal pair with this anti-correlative profile. Um, and then we've observed that there is increased sensitivity to selenexor when patients are exposed to daratumumab in our ex vivo preclinical drug sensitivity screen platform, but also in two independent clinical trials we've observed that MIC overexpression is associated with selenix or sensitivity. So that's basically the uh, summary of uh, my presentation.